can you talk a little bit about logarithms? I've been having trouble understanding them. Yeah, for sure. Dissolving girl. Let's do logarithms. I'm glad I ended up here. I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I have never done an interview in my life. Have had a couple of police interrogations <laughs> when younger though. <laughs> Good practice, Nikki says. And how are you doing? Let's talk about logarithms. Um, dissolving girl. Now, dissolving girl. Um, I'm going to link you to a video that we did in the past. Logarithms. Uh, but I'm going to go over that right now. Well, not all of it, but some, uh, a lot of it. And there is a whole series of um, a whole playlist I'm going to create specifically in regards to logs the type of same type of stuff that we've done for trigonometry if you do chicho trigonometry uh introduction to logs visualizing exponential log functions graphing here we go this is my sort of intro video to logs okay but i'm going to go through it right now with you uh just you just for you to have an appreciation for what it is okay let me sort myself up I actually heard someone say something like there's no failure you either win or you learn really stuck with me yeah pretty much as long as it doesn't take you out of the game right if uh, I'm just gonna pop some an apple delicious thank you I'm a music uh, music theorist and I always have to interact with logs since the ear hears log rhythmically does it dissolving girl that's cool i didn't know that i associate music with uh, trig functions right trigonometry our perception of sound is non-linear wow i didn't know that that's cool that's super cool i wonder why is it the material that the ear is made from or our processing abilities we are more sensitive to higher pitches uh, in real IRRC. What does IRRC stand for? Our perception of sound is non-linear, it's logarithmic, eh? You would absolutely love studying micro tonality and just in intonation. It's so incredible. Uh, Dante that's the Fletcher Monson curve which describes amplitude sensation really in terms of pure frequency sensation we hear logarithmically if I recall wow because the octave is a two to one ratio and we can hear the two to one as a distinctly different sound but the same pitch higher oh man you getting me all excited this all it's like what show me the ground show me what it looks like let's talk about logs let's talk about logs yeah that's true that's super cool so look the way it works logs is this in mathematics what we try to do musician here i uh, wondered about this nice nice uh so in mathematics what we have we have the opposite of things that we can do right so addition the opposite of addition is subtraction the opposite of multiplication is division right the opposite of something to a power of something to a certain degree is the radicals but the radicals are really the same thing this guy just goes if you're going to do this goes in the denominator of the power right now one other thing we do in mathematics is when we have an equation right so for example let's say we have this we have y is equal to 2x plus 1 right so let's say we have y is equal to 2x plus 1 and this graphs a linear function right this graphs this one and you go up to because the slope is two over one one two and over one this is this line right now one thing we like to do as human beings we like to take things apart right and take a look at them oh what are they made from right factor the other thing we like to do is we like to 
mess around with things switch up the order of things just to see what happens so mathematicians came along and said hey okay we know how to graph a line but hey what happens if we take the reciprocal of this or the inverse of this we switch the x and the y right what if our equation wasn't y is equal to 2x plus 1 what if our equation was x is equal to 2y plus 1 right what does the graph of that look like and what does that do really what does that do well first of all let's answer the question what that does what that does if you switch the position of the x and the y it takes any function right any function doesn't make a difference what it is and it flips it about the line y is equal to x okay this pen is dead I'm going to kill this time too. Let's do this in green so you see this. So it takes y is equal to x. So when you take any type of function and switch the x and the y, what you're really doing is you're taking whatever function you have and you're flipping it about the line y is equal to x you're letting the line y is equal to x act as a mirror, right? I like to think about it like this. You take whatever function you have, you put your fingers here along the line y equals x and you go whoop, and you flip this, right? So the flip of this, let's draw this in purple, I guess. The flip of this is gonna look like this. That's my crappy way of drawing a line, right? So the purple is this guy flipped, which is really this guy, right? Now, whenever you were writing a function, we're not going to write x equals 2y plus 1. You want to get the y by itself, right? So what you do is you get the y by itself. x minus 1 is equal to 2y and then divide everything by 2. So y is equal to 1 over 2x minus a half, which is what we have here, right? This is the purple function. And that's this guy, because the y-intercept is negative a half. From here, you go up one and over two. One, two, one, two, where is it? Oh, up one and over two, so we're here. Okay. Does that make sense? So that's what we're doing when you switch the x and the y. Keep this in mind. I'm going to erase this. Okay. So, let's take this out. That was a linear function we drew, right? Whoa. <laughs> that was a linear function we drew, right? We've got an infinite number of types of functions, right? Or infinite number of functions. There might be a limited types of functions. I don't know. Category-wise, there might be limited types of functions, but there's an infinite type of functions, right? Math. Yes. Yes. Smiles back. Snack. Snack. Snack that smiles back. Snack that smiles back. Nice. Now it makes sense. Randy, how are you doing? So take a look at this. Let's say we have an exponential function. Let's say we have the following. Let's say we have a function called f of x is equal to 2 to the power of x. And if you don't like f of x, let's use y. Oh my god, now it makes sense. Let's use y, right? So let's say we have a function called y is equal to 2 to the power of x. That's a large function, a huge, right? Actually, no, no, let's not do 2 to the power of x. Should we do 2 to the power? Yeah, let's do 2 to the power of x. Okay, let's make a table of values. Let's graph this function using a table of values. Okay, here's our x, here's our y. So let's just plug in values for x and find out what y is and we'll graph it here, right? First one we're gonna do is zero. So when x is zero, two to the power of zero is one. So when x is zero, two to the power of zero is one, right? When x is one, two to the power of one is two. X is 1, 1, 2. 
x is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. And 4. When x is 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. 3, that's 4. We're up here, right? We're off the board. I did not expect this to be so satisfying. What a golden moment. <laughs> this is Zachary. How are you doing? Now, we know what the graph looks like on this side. Let's see what it looks like on this side. Let's plug in values. Negative 1. So 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 2. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 2. Because anything to a negative power, all the negative does is just flips it, right? Reminds me of crypto trading days. <laughs> negative 2. 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 over 4. So negative 2 is 1 over 4. So it's here. So an exponential function looks like this. Right? Cool. Right. That's y is equal to 2 to the power of x. Right? What do mathematicians do? What do human beings do? We like to flip things around, mess around with things, right? Can we do something in four dimension or higher next? Four dimension. Uh, here's a four dimension. Ready? This is me drawing a three dimensional box at this moment. <laughs> Live streaming this on Twitch. We're in four dimensions. I just came here to say, God, I hate man so much. <laughs> you should love it. Powerful. Are you talking about tensors? Tensors, if you are, man, at some point I'm going to learn tensors. Ha, fair. Wow, love, love. That just blew my mind. <laughs> right, take a look at this. So what do mathematicians do? Mathematicians, us... We like to mess with things, right? Flip things around. That's why I'm learning now. Tensors, you're learning tensors. Oof, oof, oof. One day, one day, in my retirement, and when I'm like, I don't know, let's say 92, I'm gonna start learning tensors. Right? So, hey, that's our function. What happens if we switch X and Y? I really need to know what tensors. What happens if we go X, here, let me write that. No, let's do it here. X is equal to 2 to the power of Y. Oh, wow. X is equal to 2 to the power of Y. What's the graph of that going to look like? Right? Okay, let's do a table of values. Right? X, Y. So, If we start plugging in numbers for x, it's going to be hard for us to solve for y, right? Is it not? It is. Like, for example, let's assume, let's line up the x. Let's assume x is 1, right? In here, we're going to have 1 is equal to 2 to the power of y. What's y? What's y? 2 to the power of what is equal to 1? Well, 2 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. So 0. Right? So we can do it that way. Plug in values for x and try to find y. But we get problems because we can't guess most of the answers here. Right? If we put in x is equal to 2, right? 2, 2 to the power of y, Two to the power of what is equal to two? Oh, one. That one's easy. Cool. What if we put in three? So two to the power. Uh, sorry, three is equal to two to the power of what? Oh, way more difficult. Way more difficult, right? However, one thing we can do in math is we don't necessarily have to plug in numbers for x to find y. We can just plug in values for y and solve for x, right? Let's do it that way. No one says we have to start at x. This is an equation relating x and y. Equation relating x and y. We can just do values for y and solve for the x, right? 
I Google what a tensors are, then close the window and <laughs> call the lock. I'm going to be going back to school, so the math is making me nervous. Uh, tensors are very pretty. I think I'll try and learn them via Python. Nice. That's what TensorFlow is made for. Oh, Riot, you're making me envious. You're making me jealous. One day I'm going to get into this, right? One day I'm going to get into this. So let's plug in values for y. When y is 0, 2 to the power of 0 is 1. When y is 1, 2 to the power of 1 is 2. When y is 2, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. When y is 3, 2 to the power of 3 is 8. Right. Take a look. Do you see? 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8. Oh. Right. Okay, let's try one more. y to the power of negative 1. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 over 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all you're doing. So negative 2 is negative 1 over... Oh, sorry. It's 1 over 4, right? Because when you do this, when you switch the x and the y's, what you're doing is you're doing a flip about the line y is equal to x, right? You're doing a flip about this line. y is equal to x. When you're doing a flip about the line y is equal to x, you're grabbing your function and go So this guy's going to go poof. What you're doing in terms of tables, the coordinate system, you're switching the x and the y's because that's exactly what you did. You switched the x and the y. So you switched the x and the y's, right? You're okay there so far? I think TensorFlow might not be the right start for me. Too much uh, boilerplate. I'd rather do something lightweight and taller size. So what you're doing is you're switching the x and the y. That's what that means when you switch the x and the y in the function, right? So the graph of this guy looks like this. 1 and 0, 2 and 1, 4 and 2, 4 and 2, 8 and 3, way over there, a half and negative 1, uh, a quarter and negative 2, right? So the graph looks like this. Ooh, sorry. So we know what visually this looks like, right? Cool. Now this is called exponential functions, right? What are we going to call that? These types of functions. Anti-exponentials? What's a good word for these? We're going to call them logs because that's what logs are. Logs are the inverse of exponentials. That's what logs are, okay? And what they do is, <laughs> exactly, right? They're just the inverse of exponentials. Logarithmic functions are you switching the x and the y around for exponential functions and coming with that function. Now, what we need to do is, wait, it's not gradient descent. I lied. It's linear regression, okay? Exponential functions were the hopes of every <laughs> every technician now this crypto trader yeah any trader not just crypto any trader right so take a look at this this is our function right and again like the line that we had right we had the equation of the line and we switched the x and the y but we don't want to write the equations as x is equal to 2y we need to get y by itself how do we get y by itself let's do it just like exponentials, logarithms have certain rules, right? Those are words. Right. So let's take this function. Here, let me erase this part. Give us room here so we can mess around with it. Right. Let's see how dark is this. That's dark. That will show up. A bit hard to erase though. This one's nasty. Let me find one that's going to be easy to work with. Okay, that's the same color. We'll use this one. So 
So take a look at this. Let's take function x is equal to 2 to the power of y. Just like mathematics, right? You can do things on one side with an equal sign as long as you do them to the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to take logs of both sides. So this becomes log x is equal to log 2y. Okay. So all we've done right now, because you need a little bit of preliminary log intro to this, but all we've done right now is take logs of both sides. It's like saying here, let's multiply both sides by 5. This would be 5y is equal to 5 times 2 to the power of x, right? We just multiply both sides by 5, okay? What we're doing right now is we're taking logs of both sides. Now, logarithms, just like exponentials, they have certain rules, right? One of the rules in logarithms is this. The standards says this. If you have log of a to the power of b, you can kick the b down. And this would be b is equal to log a. Oh, sorry, not equal to. Is equal to b log a. Okay, that's one of the rules we have regarding logarithms. So for this right now, what we can do is grab the y and kick it down in front of the log. So right now you got log x is equal to y log 2, right? And the name of the game is we want to get y by itself. So we're going to divide this side by log 2, and we're going to divide this side by log 2. So this becomes y is equal to log x over, oops, log 2. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see it. Now, one of the things we have with this is the rules of logs is this. So you can write the exponent in front of the log. Exactly. If it's in the power, it can come down to the front of the log, right? And the and the trick with learning logarithms is learning the log rules, which is basically learning the same way you did with how to deal with exponentials, right? So if you had exponentials like x squared times x cubed, well, you add those guys. That's x to the power of 5. Once you know that, you know it. It's over, right? Logs has the same type of rules associated with it. Learn the log rules everything else is easy right it becomes ridiculously easy okay for example here one of the log rules we have is this if we have log of a over log of b here let me put the small case b you can write this as log a to the base b it's just terminology right well cool this one means I'm just going to erase this part. You can write this as log x to the base 2. So this function written in log form, and I like to show it this way, right? If you want to con convert this to log form, you can just grab the 2, kick it down in the log base, and this just becomes, let me write it with this, y and this guy drops y is equal to log base 2 of x this is this graph okay this part you can think about it this way grab the 2 kick it down in the base and this guy drops oh focus focus there we go. Right. Grab the two, kick it down into the base, and this guy drops. Okay? That's the basics of logarithms. Aside from this, there's like seven log rules that we have. You just have to know how to manipulate them, right? How to work with them. Just like you did exponentials, just like you do this. Okay? Really. I know logs takes a lot of people out of the math game. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. It's, 
once you wrap your head around what logs are, then you're just playing around with another type of function and there's certain rules associated with logs and you can manipulate your function accordingly. Okay?